Hello Wade Explorers, thanks for joining us again and welcome back to another exciting and informative video on our YouTube channel. If you are joining us for the first time, I want to thank you for watching. For those of you who follow our channel, you notice we focus on informative and educating content on this channel. Today we are looking at the skyrocketing cost of travel within the continent of Africa. Why this is a prevalent issue that has been ignored. However, those who are really experiencing this high cost are beginning to speak out. Some were saying, what a Maya, why don't you come to my country? What a Maya, you're in Africa for two months and you just visited only five countries? You are from Ghana and you never come to Nigeria? But hold on, I am here to answer why I decided to travel only five countries out of the 55 countries in two months. Why? Because traveling in Africa is super expensive. I spent 6,000 US dollars on flights alone. If you don't believe me, stay tuned and I'm going to show you how expensive it is to travel within Africa. For those of you who have been to the continent of Africa and like someone who has traveled the region, have experienced huge costs in several ways. The economics of the continent of Africa has experienced huge growth and expansion in the last 10 years. However, this has been in some minor sectors. Traveling has been a very important area that has been ignored in the continent of Africa, from goods from rural areas to people moving and doing business within regions. In this episode, I'm going to discuss with you and bring you some very important examples as to the reason why this is an issue that is not going anywhere soon. If the continent does not address this, it will slow down the growth coming out from post-COVID-19. It is very important considering the African continental free trade implementation. If these minor sectors are not being looked at, it will slow down the economies in a number of ways. According to the African Development Bank Group, Africa International Tourism increased to 67 million tourists in 2018, compared to 58 million tourist arrivals in 2016, more than a 15% increase. International visitors brought in 37 billion US dollars onto the continent in 2017. When it comes to holiday travel, Africa is the second fastest growing market in the world, now employing 9.3 million people, making it a billion dollar industry. It is extremely expensive to travel within the continent of Africa. The thing is, the continent has focused too much on air travel. Air travel has monopolized travel in the continent of Africa. And this is a big issue. For a continent that has over 50 countries, we expect to see people moving with using different means of transportation. I mean, it's so difficult to cross the borders in most of those countries in Africa. So focusing on air travel alone, you need to implement rails and other options that people can travel freely. It's important for Africa to implement rail travel because this will revolutionize the way that people travel within the region. And it's important and eliminate all these visa requirements. The visa requirements are killing the continent. The visa clarifications are not there. The procedures are not there. Most people are very confused with regards to travel not just within while they are in the continent, but from embassies as well. Getting a visa from one of Africa's embassies abroad, moving to the continent, you become lost. It can never be so cheap to travel in Europe or US and not travel in Africa with the same amount. When you consider the cost of visa within Africa and the cost of visa within traveling within Europe, it's, it's like day and night. If you consider tour visits in the continent, which ranges from hundreds of dollars, and tour visits in Europe ranging on just mere 20 to 30 dollars in some cases, then you will begin to understand that the continent has a problem. We cannot focus on things which are not relevant, and we cannot look at growth and expansion to be on buildings and new houses. We should look at the social fabrics and how people can move freely. So to make sure that everyone understands that growth has actually arrived in the continent. But I think the visa is extremely expensive. It's, it's extremely expensive. Um, one person um, acquiring visa fee just to visit Congo and it's um, 250 USD. It's so expensive. And, and it's not just $250. It ranges from $250 to $400, of which I think is really ridiculous, man. It's really ridiculous. I mean, if you want Africans to travel within Africa, or if you even want to attract tourism into Congo, why must you charge that outrageous amount? If that is the case, you're actually killing tourism. For example, 
Wada Maya is one of Africa's most renowned YouTubers. If somebody like this could face challenges in terms of travel and expressing his frustration, therefore means this problem is real. He's not the only one emphasizing and talking about this. It is a clear indication that Africa need to put things in order. It cannot be so expensive to move from just one country to the other. I'd watched previous videos of him talking about how it's so expensive to move from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. You, before you cross, you have to have a visa to get to the uh, Republic of Congo. And these are countries which are sharing borders. So it, it's interesting to see that this is something which the continent needs to work on. This is an urgent issue. The focus on these issues cannot be underestimated and why it's slowing down the African growth. From what he is saying, it's what replicates and grow across the board to other travelers within the region. From the people that read your blog, would you say that Africans want to travel? Increasingly, what I'm finding is that Africans want to travel within their own countries as a starting point, and then within Africa, and then take it out from there. What's stopping them from traveling? Cost is a very big thing. Cost um, in terms of flights, in terms of availability of accommodation in a lot of African destinations. There's also, as usual, the big question around visas and why we need visas as Africans, um, especially because they're so prohibitive in costs. And the third thing is flights. The thing is, it's just so expensive to travel within the continent. Some will argue that, but what is the reason why you're looking at these travel expenses? Visa is a very important requirement for you to move within the region. However, if you consider Africa with many countries around, it's so expensive to move from one African country to the other. I really don't understand and get this clearly. This affects the way people move. Very important things that we're talking about on how people can travel, uh, go to one country to the other and do business or travel to showcase the continent of Africa. The visa procedures are not pretty clear. The requirements are not clear. The costs are so expensive. It is so expensive to travel or get a visa from one African country to move to the next African country than it is in Europe. For those of you who have experienced this, you can testify that it is not worth it for people to move from one African country to the other. I really don't understand why this correlation and the reason why this is something which is not being looked at. I really don't understand also why this is a very important area which needs to be addressed, but the visa requirements are not clear. The costs are not clear. No, I think this conversation is important uh, to really uh, show what's happening actually in the ground. Uh, you know, how we're going to move. I think uh, more, a couple of us, we have a lot of, you know, work in our hands to do. I mean, today, for example, what, what I keep saying, luckily, uh, you know, people like uh, Vera, they are there, they are actually, you know, pushing. You know, they have done this African Union passports. Passports? Yeah. Yes, okay. I haven't uh, got one yet, I don't know why. Uh, no, they have to give you one, you know, yeah, definitely. They, they I don't... mean, it's better for yeah. you, because if you now see my passports, I carry six to seven passports because of visas, okay? And even though I'm an investor, but I need uh, visas in almost 38 countries out of 55 or so. So now they have issued us with the African Union passport. About a few of us who have gotten the first. Three of us. Maybe how, three How or much four. do I have to pay for that? No, I didn't pay anything. Come on. I mean, <coughs> no, no, no. no. But, but look, I mean, I haven't got one. I mean, I, I support the African you Union. And they didn't give me one. <laughs> <laughs> You must have paid something for those guys. No, 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 no. Okay. We got it, it is in uh, Addis Ababa at the African okay. Union. So I've got one. But let me tell you this, the one that I have, um, I went to South Africa quite okay. And uh, I think you the carry, new- carrying a Nigerian passport or South African passport? No, 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 carrying African Union passport. African Union passport. Yes, but this same African Union passport, you know, I'm sorry, you know, since uh, we're all talking very openly, but I was invited by the president of Angola to come and, uh, you know, see him. And, uh, you know, I had to go. Normally, I don't travel much during fasting period, but I went. And uh, when I went there, I had to be given visa on African Union passport. Maybe uh, there is a fees for the visa? 
No. There's like, no fees. It's not about fees. That, when you say African Union passport, it means that you should move money. everywhere. No. Free yeah, of charge. I thought that was the agreement. <clears throat> yes. Okay. So I had to apply for visa. And intentionally, when I applied for the visa, I also applied on African Union passport, and I gave them that one to sample it. Maybe you need to send the pictures of that to Musa Faki to say. No, what no, no. I'm that. going to send it to Vera. <laughs> so, this is an area where it's not only affecting the African people or the African diaspora, it affects other tourists that are moving to the continent. People cannot travel clearly. They cannot have a clear understanding with regards to visa within the region. They might have a visa from one country and want to stop into the continent. They are diff having difficulties to move from one country to the other. Schengen, 26 countries, Schengen countries use one visa. And African visas cost $50. $50. 26 visas, it would cost 1,300 USD. Mm. So, but that Schengen uh, visa, it's like half of Africa you travel with one visa. Because Africa we have 54 countries. The cost of excursions in Africa, they are quite, quite pricey. The park entry fee in most of the parks in Africa, they are approximately 1,100 USD plus. Well, most of the excursions in, in Europe cost around 30 USD or less. We don't have a, a good network. The thing is, traveling within the continent has exposed a lot of weaknesses within the continent of Africa. It's important. Let me just give you an example. There is a popular African YouTuber who is called Ayam Mawa. Um, it's important that this guy is currently visiting and traveling Europe. He's looking at Europe. If you consider his travel in the past two to three weeks, he has visited over seven countries in Europe, from Belgium to Germany to the Netherlands to Luxembourg to Denmark to Sweden, just on one visa. This is important. The question here is how can Africa not implement something similar? How is it so difficult? Why is this so protectionism? Africa is so protective of its borders for what I really don't understand why they are protecting these borders to an extent. The moment the air travel monopolizes the traveling scene, it becomes definitely expensive. Because first of all, the taxes are quite high. So these airlines would actually avoid going to certain destinations because of fuel. Traveling in Africa is, is circuitous. It means you have to always lay over in every destination. And that costs. You know you have to pay for when you, when you land in any particular country you have to pay. But the problem is that we have a, what we call the stubborn nationalism. Every country is trying to protect their borders. Most of them, I could say up to 90%, you have to have a layover. Hopefully we've been able to inform you and present to you the challenges and difficulties faced by travelers within the continent of Africa and why Africans should work extremely hard to resolve this issue. Otherwise, the growth and expansion that everyone is expected to see post-COVID-19 uh, could be uh, um, a kind of a slow the economy down uh, because travel is so important. If you look at the way the market about traveling is, as Africa has focused too much on air travel, air travel is not going to be the solution. Just Africa needs to implement rail travel and other methods of traveling. It's very vital. I want to thank you for watching. Hopefully, we've informed you. For those of you who are watching our channel for the first time, we encourage you to watch some of our informative video with regards to the continent of Africa. We are looking forward to meeting you soon in our next episode. Have a good day. Bye-bye.